Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 25 to my Game Maker RPG Basics series. I think it's 25 now. We're getting pretty far. In this episode, I'm going to start showing you guys how you can save your game. So let me actually run my project here. And what you'll do is we will add... So in the pause menu, you'll be able to pause, and we're going to add a return button, and we'll also add a quit button, so you'll be able to press that and quit the game. And these will work, we'll, we'll hook those up so that they work. And then we're also going to add a save. Now what will happen is when you save your game like this, and then you return, you'll be able to go in, and there'll be a file like this. It has the saved game okay but you won't be able to read it it'll be encrypted and we're gonna use just a really basic encryption uh, but we'll encrypt it so that people can't hack their save files and give themselves infinite health unless they really work hard we'll make them work for it if they're gonna cheat and then you'll be able to load this save file, but we're not going to talk about loading in this episode yet. We're going to just focus on adding the controls, getting everything set up. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the pause menu. And we're going to come into the step event of our pause menu. And inside of this step event... Oh, also real quick, I'm giving out a free Udemy course. So if you go to my website and sign up for my email list, there should be either a pop-up or a thing in the footer for you to sign up for my email list. I'll send you a free Udemy course. It is for beginners, so it's not it's not really a good course for advanced users, but it's designed to help you build your first game really fast and finish it. So just thought I'd mention that. So let's go and Inside of here, what we need to do is we need to have a section where we check for the dash key, and that's what I'm going to use. So we're going to say if object input dot dash key. Basically, we're going to use the dash key to make our selection inside of the menu. We're going to use a switch statement, switch menu index. Okay. And inside of here, we're going to have some cases. Case 0, break, case 1, break, case 2, break, and case 3, break. And then we'll have a default, which just, does, which just won't do anything default break so we've got all of our cases set up now each of these are set up as an option on our menu if you remember our menu index will cycle through each menu and the first one is just returning so the first one is return so we're gonna say object player oh so first we're gonna say uh, we're gonna say room go to and let's check to see where we stored the last room. I think we stored it in side of the input. Yep, you can see we've stored previous room inside of the input. We're actually going to move this to the player's stats. So copy this right here. Do control X. And open up the player's stats. Come into the create event. Do control V right here. And we're going to copy the code that brings them to the pause menu as well. So go, in, go into the step event here in the player, in, inside, of the, inside of the input right here. Go into the step event inside of the input. And the whole pause the game thing, we're going to move this inside. Okay. Yes. We're going to move this inside of the player stats as well, inside of the step event in here. And the reason we're going to do that is because it makes more sense to have the players, 
Our input object should really only handle input. It shouldn't deal with pausing and loading the game. So I'm putting that inside of the stats. Now this is just a personal preference. You could leave it, but I'm going to move it. So once you've moved that, press OK. Then we can say room go to object player stats dot previous room. And that should allow us to return. And then on case three, this is exiting the game. So we're just going to call this, we're just going to call a script called game end. That should end the game. And then for saving and loading right here, for saving, we're going to create a new script here. It's going to be called script save game parentheses. And I'm going to create this script up here. We'll name it script save game script save game parentheses okay so we've got that done for now let's just show a message show message game saved it won't actually save so we're totally lying but I just want to make sure that this part right here works so run the game And we've got pause key. It doesn't know what pause key is. Okay, that makes sense. So come into, it's because I moved, it's because I moved the pausing code into the input. So we need to make sure that instead of just, oops, I moved it into the player stats. So come into this step event for the player stats. And we're going to change this to object input dot pause key. Now I'm actually going to change the pause key. So come into the input and middle click on get input, script get input, that'll open it up. I want my pause key to be um, ORD the Z key. And the reason I want to do that is because it's easier for the player to pause. Now you can still do whatever key you want to. Okay, now I can press the Z key to pause and it looks like we broke so let's find out what happened there okay I'm back that one had me going for a little bit there it was tricky to figure out so here's what's happening so come into the object player stats so what's happening is our object input the pause key event is getting triggered or I guess our pause key is becoming true because we press it. But what's happening is it's, it runs into a loop where it switches between these rooms indefinitely back and forth over and over and over again because pause key never gets a chance to update itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to capture, once we've used the pause key, we're going to make sure and capture it and say, okay, you're false now because we don't want you to um, continue triggering the pause key. So we're going to say object input dot pause key equals false. This just tells the game that we've already used this. We can now set it back to false immediately so that we don't get stuck in this room loop right here. And you'll notice there's actually another place that we're going to use this. So if you run the game, you should be able to pause the game using the Z key and unpause now. Should work correctly. But you'll note, what you'll notice is if you do return using uh, the dash key, your player dashes. So we're going to do the same thing. Come into the pause menu right here. Go into the step event. And right here when we, grab the, when we get the dash key input right there, we're going to set the dash key equal to false. So we're going to say object input dot dash key equals false. This will say we've already gotten the dash key input, so now we can turn it off. And you'll see that now when we select the return, we, our character doesn't dash immediately outside of the return. Now save uh, should just say game saved, but it won't actually save it. And load won't do anything, but quit should close your game. So that one should be working. So let's work on the save game script now. 
And you're going to learn about two things. You're going to learn about DS maps, which are a data structure that can hold information. And you're also going to learn about, well, there's a lot of things to learn. This is a tricky one, okay? This video, we're starting to get into some tricky. This is not really beginner anymore. But that's okay because you've come a long way. You've learned a lot of stuff. So we can start to get into these trickier things. So you're going to learn about data structures. You're going to learn about a specific data structure called a map, which just holds information kind of like an object. You're going to learn about a function called JSON encode, which takes a data structure and turns it into a string. Okay which is just text that a human can read. Really nice, actually. And then we're going to learn about file systems. So let's get started. I'm going to middle click on the script save here. We're going to get rid of our game saved message. Well, you know what? Let's leave that for now. That's actually kind of useful. Just put it at the very end. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure the player object exists. We don't want them to be able to save if they're dead. So we're going to say, make sure the player exists. If not instance exists, object player. Exit. So we're just going to do that all on one line like that. That way we'll just jump out of this script if the player doesn't exist. Then we need to create a temporary variable. So create the save data structure. So we're going to say var save data equals ds map create. So we're creating a map. Now we're going to go inside of the we're going to go inside of the player stats object. So with object player stats. And then inside of here, we're going to save all of the player's information into the data structure. Now this doesn't actually save it because if you close GameMaker at this point, it will still delete the data structure. But here in a minute we'll save it to a file so we're going to say save data which is the data structure we created and then you do a square bracket like that and a question mark this is called an accessor and it lets us to access uh, a certain value in the data structure and we're actually creating a value so we're going to create one called room so we're going to save the room into our data structure so just save it as previous room Oh, we need an equal sign in there. Okay. Now I'm actually going to copy this because we're going to have the same for format for, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 more. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've copied it down 10 times. Now this one isn't going to be room. This one's going to be X. This one right here is going to be Y. This one right here is going to be HP. This one right here is max HP. This one is stamina. This one is max stamina. This one is experience. This one is max experience. This one is level. There must be one short here. Did I get? An extra one. I'm missing one, so there must have been one more. This last one is attack. The player's attack stat. So then we need to change all these right here as well. Okay? So we're going to save here a special variable called player. Well, for now, actually, just save play the x and y as 0. Okay? We're going to fix this in the next video when we do loading and save a special x and y coordinate there. For the hit points, we're going to say HP, because we're inside the player's stats, so we have access to the stats. We're going to do max HP, stamina, max stamina, experience, 
max experience level and attack now you can save whatever you want but just remember that uh, if you don't save stuff like the level then you won't be able to load it and so probably don't really need to save stamina and max stamina you can just res well no you do need to set you do need to save those because they level up but what some people will do is they'll create a function where they can pass in a level and it spits out all the rest of the information because then all they have to do is save the player level but we're not going to do that so now that we've got our data structure we need to turn it into a string which is just the readable format where we can read it so we're going to say var save string equals json in code save data so what this does is it takes our data structure our ds map and it turns it into a JSON file, which is a JavaScript. This, this is short for JavaScript object notation. And it's a really easy way to read information. Humans, computers can read it pretty easy, and humans can read it easily too. Right? And then what we're going to do is once we have our save string, we're actually going to destroy the, destroy the DS map that we cre created up here. So DS map destroy and then just do save data okay so we got rid of that but we still have it in this string so now we're going to open up a file so do var file equals file text open write now we're going to type in working directory plus and then this is what your file is going to be named so I'm going to name this my save game dot txt. Okay. Now that we've opened this file, the working directory is just where GameMaker works with files. Now that we've saved it, we're going to say file text write string, and the file we're going to write to is file. We saved that up here, right here in this temporary variable. And the string that we're going to write to the file is save data. Okay? And then we're going to close the file. So file, text, close, file. Okay. Our save function should work now. I'm going to press the green check mark. Save and run the game. Now what you'll see is when we go to save the game. Save right there and press return come back in here it should have saved now we're gonna need to check this so we're going to uh, you're gonna need to go to a specific file location so it's in it's under this PC local disk users owner app data you need to and you'll probably need to type this in like this because app data is a hidden file so you can't see it but if you type it in like this you should be able to get to it then local and then scroll down until you find your I've got a lot in here I've got RPG basics right here RPG basics vid this is the one that I want to look in come in here and there's player achievements cache dot data okay so that didn't we're in RPG basics vid so let's double check that, see what's going on. So we do save the game here. What happened with object stats? If not instance exists, wait, if the instance, yeah, if the player doesn't exist, exit. Okay, that looks good. My save game .txt working directory file text open right file save oh whoops okay so I'm trying to do save data here it should be save string okay save string we're yeah it's no wonder it didn't know what was going no wonder it crashed on us didn't save okay so make sure you have it as save string just go to save that still didn't work don't know why let's double check make sure it didn't work come into RPG basics vid yeah it's still not in here 
case one. But we were getting the message before this right here, show message, game saved. So let's move this up, actually. We'll do some debugging here and try and figure out where we die. So we'll do it there. Run the game. And save. Doesn't work. Okay. So it's crashing before that. That's interesting. Let's come. Do it up here. Run the game. Oh, it's not crashing. It's because we're checking for the player object when we should be checking for the player stats object. That's silly of me. Okay, so there you go. The player object obviously doesn't exist in the pause menu. So we're going to say if object player stats right here. Okay. Save your game. Run it. Let's try this one more time. Save. There we go. Game saved. Return. Now, if you come into that file that I was telling you about right here. Oh, look. My save game. There's the text document. And when we open it up, look, we have max HP equals 5. Attack is 1. Stamina is 10. You can see we've saved all of this information in here. And it's pretty easy to read. Like, you know, this is a JSON file. But the problem is that someone could hack this. So what we're going to do is we're going to encrypt it. And Sean Spaulding actually made a video on this. And so you can check that out if you want to as well. Just search uh, Game Maker Save Encryption or something. Sean's video will come up. But uh, I, I'm doing it a little differently because we're encrypting a JSON file. Which I think makes it a little harder to hack. But... His way works as well, so you can check that out if you want to see his way. Okay, so we're gonna once we've got the save string right here, let's encrypt it. So we're gonna say save string equals base sixty four encode save string. So we're doing a base sixty four encryption. We're gonna encode it. And that will make it so that we won't, we won't be able to understand. We won't be able to read our save file anymore. But it's good because then people can't hack it. So come in. Press save here. Save the game. Game saved. Return. Close out. Well, don't need to close out of it, I guess. Come into our file here. My save game. And you cannot read this. Right? It's the same information though, it's just not readable by humans anymore. And so the benefit of that is that nobody can hack it. And then later on, when we load it back in, we'll, uh, we'll switch it back so that we can actually load it. It'll be easy to access, it won't be difficult to read like that. So there you go, that is saving and a couple other little things, including data structures. So just a quick recap. We create a data structure right here, with, which is a map. We save information to that data structure using these little accessors like this and creating keys. So maps are made up of key value pairs. So this is the key and this is the value. Then what we do is we use the JSON encode to turn this data structure into a human readable string. And then we make that string into a non-human readable string again using the base64 in code and then we save that to a file really simple so thank you guys so much for watching if this video was helpful be sure and like it subscribe check out my website for more of my uh, content and I'll talk to you guys later